let's move on to the next portion of this video. And most of you are probably aware of this, but there's a, uh, quite a few that are brand new to long range shooting and they might not have any idea how this even gets tackled. So basically, the way people classically do this in the long range shooting world is they have a ballistic uh, table or a ballistic chart like this one I have here. And I'm just going to use uh, a 308 Winchester with the, a typical 168 grain Bowtail Hollow Point Match King as kind of a reference here. But this first system I'm going to show you is really the way most of the long range shooting world operates. Um, and what they do is basically you get your rifle and you select a, a load and projectile that's going to be a have good long range efficiency and uh, you know real real good inherent accuracy. And what most guys do is they take the rifle out to uh, the range and you zero it at like a hundred meters, and you just uh, dial in your scope. You don't pay any attention to the numbers. Just crank on your turrets until you get your impact to be exactly dead on at a hundred meters. Once they confirm consistent impact right on the bullseye at that range, what they do is you take your Allen wrench or your tool, whatever kind of, it depends on which optic you're using, but there's little Allen screws usually uh, on the turret cap. Now that external turret cap is really just a cap. The actual mechanism is on the inside of that. And that cap is basically a numbered protector that turns uh, the real turret adjustment on the inside. And you loosen up. You don't want to turn the dial, but you loosen up them, uh, them Allen screws, which are basically holding that cap tight to the actual uh, turret screw, the adjustment in there, okay? And you loosen those up so that it's not connected to your internal adjustments. Then you do it, they, they call it slipping the scales. And you, you basically just turn that turret and put it on zero. So you have all those different numbers that, on the, that repeat going around the turret. You want to put that to where the zero lines up with the hash mark, okay? And hopefully you have all your screws loose so that when you turn it, it's not clicking. If it's clicking on the internal mechanism, you didn't loosen your, your screw up enough, and then you have to re-zero it and then do it over. But uh, basically, you just get that thing uh, zeroed, matched up with the hash mark, and then you re-tighten your Allen screws without screwing it up. And hopefully, and you do that for both your windage and your elevation uh, knobs. That's how a target scope basically works for those of you who might not be familiar with that. So what you have is your weapon is now zeroed at 100 meters and your your uh, turrets are also zeroed as well. So your, tur your turret is physically showing zero on the hash mark and you're perfectly on. Then what you do, and uh, th there's different ways of doing this. A lot of guys like to verify their actual uh, zeros at the different ranges, but they usually go in 100 meter increments or 100 yard increments, whatever system you're using, okay? And uh, they set up a target and they shoot at it until they get it perfectly zeroed, and then they write that number down in a notebook. And that's actually a pretty good way of doing that for the most part. And as we're going to see when we get into the more advanced side, side of this, there's a lot of factors that are going to change that so it's not this simple in real life but for medium range uh you know you're talking inside 700 meters or something maybe six seven hundred meters this will kind of work for you is that you just go out in your standard operating conditions you know a typical temperature and barometric pressure like a normal day for your operating environment and uh you go out and you just confirm your zeros at each one of these ranges, write that down in your notebook, and that's basically your beginning card. That's your basic card that's calibrated to your standard conditions. So now you know what your drop is from uh, zero to 1,000 meters, basically. And if you got values in between the 100 meter increments, you're going to have to interpolate between the numbers or graph that out. And I'll show you how to do interpolation later between these numbers. But that's probably the most simple way of doing this, and this is the most common way that folks do set up their long-range cards. And what you do is real simple. You see a target at 700 meters. You look at it. You crank it up to 25.9 minutes of angle elevation. You aim dead on, and then you shoot. And then you should be relatively close. Now, the problem is that in real life, there's no such thing as standard conditions because the air density is almost always constantly changing. 
First of all, you're going to have varying uh, temperature of your uh, your air temperature is going to change. Your uh, your barometric pressure is going to change throughout the day quite dramatically. You're going to have humidity changes, which aren't as big of a deal. And you're also going to have huge changes in uh, internal ballistics with ammo temperature change and all sorts of other deals that are going to completely throw off your muzzle velocity from the conditions that you zeroed your weapon for. Okay, So basically, a lot of guys set up these charts, and uh, what they do is they laminate them and they stick them on the side of the rifle stock. And even I did this uh, when I was growing up and stuff for my long-range shooting. And uh, what you'll find out if you've done this before and you actually shoot a lot is that the chart's kind of sort of in the ballpark, but you're going to miss by quite a lot quite often. Some days you might get lucky and everything might be exactly the same it was the day you went out under your so-called standard conditions and confirmed your zeros. But if the conditions have changed at all or your internal ballistics vary at all, which they will basically always be varying, um, you're going to hit in a way different spot. So how do we get around all that? Well, we'll discuss that in just a minute here. Uh, next, I want to uh, real briefly explain there is a second way to do this. A lot of folks don't actually go out and confirm all their zeros at those different ranges. Sometimes it's hard to find a spot to shoot where you got uh, perfect incrementations of 100 meters all the way out to 1,000. That's kind of difficult to find, especially as shooting ranges aren't really set up for that. Uh, so what a lot of guys do is rather than actually confirming these zeros by shooting, they'll uh, go access a uh, ballistic calculator. And there's a lot of them online, uh, online ballistic calculators. I think like uh, all your major reloading companies like Sierra and Hornady and uh, even Night Force Optics has one, Horus has one. There's a million different ballistic calculators. And they're all pretty dang close, actually, if you get all your input variables correct. And what they'll do is they'll type in their specific load. They'll say, okay, I got a... 168 grain match king with the ballistic coefficient of 447 at 2600 feet a second. My scope is mounted 1.5 inches above the bore. They'll type in all the uh, the input information and then it'll give them the uh, drop. And it'll give you uh, options usually on what kind of drop you want. If you have a scope that's delineated in minutes of angle, you're going to obviously want your drop in minutes of angle, not inches. If your scope is uh, marked off in milliradians, then you're going to want to specify your drop on your ballistics program to be in milliradians. Um, inches of drop is one way that some guys do it. That is, and I'm not really going to cover that because it's not really a good way of doing it at all. Um, but that's uh, that's another way that some folks do it. They kind of have a, a little piece of paper. They might have read it in a, from the annu the ammunition manufacturers uh, literature. Like, okay, this uh, 150 grain bullet or whatever drops 42 inches at whatever range. And then they kind of just try to eyeball inches out in the field. That, that's less than precise. So um, the, the more common way of actually doing it for serious long-range shooters is to actually just dial in your uh, elevation, obviously, on your optic. That's why we went through all the trouble in the optic selection to make sure you have an instr instrument that's capable of doing that with precision. So uh, there's the two ways you can confirm your zeros by shooting at every uh, range, or you can uh, get a ballistics calculator uh, to do that. And, uh, you know, there's different minor variations in the mathematical algorithms that go into calculating those. But for the most part, if you're doing it this way anyways, which is less than precise, we're going to show you the full way to do it. Uh, that's going to be very, very precise. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about the math differences. They're all actually pretty good. So, let's say you got this uh, ballistics table built up one day, and you confirmed your zeros even. You, you even went out and tested it. You didn't just believe the computer. You went out and actually confirmed your zeros, got it all written down in your book, and you even wrote down your information. You have, okay... The barometric pressure the day you confirmed your zeros was 29.56 inches of mercury. Your air temperature was 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Your humidity was 0% that day. And you even took out your chronograph that you bought, and you marked down that your measured velocity was exactly 2,600 feet per second for the sake of our uh, little story here. 
So you have all that stuff uh, written down on your card. That's what you always want to do, by the way. You want to write down all the particulars because you're not going to remember that stuff a year from now when you're having 10 piles of charts. So you got all that stuff figured out. Then you went out and uh, you're going to go deer hunting in the fall. And uh, it's a little cooler that day. And there was a storm blowing in, so your barometric pressure dropped. And your ammo was heating up a little bit because it was sitting on the dash of the pickup truck. And your bore had broken in a little bit, so uh, the friction dynamics changed. And you see a mule deer standing there at uh, 600 meters. Yeah, look at your ballistics chart. You crank up 19.7 uh, minutes of angle on your scope. You even figure out your windage, and you got your windage from your uh, computer program there, so you, that's pretty precise. And uh, you apply the, the proper hold off in, for windage, or you dial it off, or whatever you're going to do. And you have everything indexed, you uh, do everything perfect, you follow through the shot, and you miss by like three feet. Bummer. <laughs> That's kind of the hard way to learn that uh, there's no such thing as standard conditions. And stuff always changes. And you can't neglect the details when you're talking long-range shooting. Now, a chart like this will sort of work. It's a lot better than guessing, and it's definitely 10 steps beyond a swag or what a lot of guys call scientific wild-ass guess or Kentucky windage, where you're just kind of eh, holding over a bit. You know, uh, a lot of guys like uh, my, my father actually pretty awesome at doing that uh, scientific uh, wild-ass guess. He can, he can make some pretty good hits at long range just by uh, intuition after his experience shooting a lot, you know, at long range. But not, not all of us are blessed with the samurai skills, I guess. So, uh, if you want any kind of long-range consistency and precision and accuracy to where you're going to be able to deliver a confident first-round hit at uh, unknown distances, no matter what kind of conditions you're going to be in. Remember, this video series is talking about long-range precision shooting for real-world applications. In the real world, conditions change dramatically all the time. And you're going to have to precisely account for those. So how do guys do that? Well, we're going to talk about that in a little more detail in our next video where I'm going to kind of show the 23-10 the field manual, the U.S. Army Sniper field manual, and their methods to correct for temperature changes and humidity changes and things like that. So basically what you're going to need to know, this chart is not going to be enough. You're going to have to know how much your different factors that are your changing conditions, each one of those conditions, your muzzle velocity could change, your barometric pressure is definitely going to change, your air temperature is probably going to change, and your uh, humidity is going to be changing. So you have to know how each one of those affects the flight of your bullet, okay? And you're going to have to know by how much. And uh, it's not all linear. It's not all just in a, you can't graph in a straight line. Sometimes, you know, as you get higher up in the temperature, things are affected more dramatically than they are at uh, low temperatures. So there's just a, a infinite host of variables that are constantly changing. There is a system to get kind of past that, and I'll show that to you before we're all done with our ballistics portion of this series. But uh, we're just going to kind of pound through and really examine critically uh, these different ways that have been the classic ways of doing long-range shooting so that you can better understand what most folks do and appreciate what you're about to learn. So in this next video, we're going to go over the United States Army Field Manual's uh, corrections for temperature and humidity, and we're going to be kind of critical, and we're going to not spare the rod on the 23-10 Field Manual because there are some crazy things in there, actually. And... Uh, we're also going to do a crash course on wind and how the the different methods for uh, the simple methods for wind calculation. And we'll get into a lot more detail when we uh, address each one of these in a full video. We're not this is just a crash course explaining the basics of how it's classically done. This is not how I'm going to recommend you actually do your setup because uh as we're going to find, there's a lot of problems with this, especially once you get over 700 meters. It's really, really not the ideal system. Uh, but we're going to go through it nonetheless just for sake of uh, building a foundation so you guys know where everyone else is at.
Okay, next video is uh, shredding the U.S. Army 23-10 field manual.